The subject of this video presents an existential crisis on my part or for any uh, tech or person in the technical service field. How do you justify your existence when you have an issue that remains unresolved after numerous attempts? And how do you effectively communicate that to the customer without coming across without coming across like every other tech in the service industry, you know? How do you project uh, integrity when you're not the one experiencing the issue or you're not the one who's able to provoke it when you provoke things professionally for a living? How do you do that? Have I failed? That's the question. Maybe. Is this the white flag, perhaps? But let's just have a shot of reality, along with all the wins uh, that I present on the channel. I, there are challenges, and once every five years, I get one of these. And I'm hoping this is not going to be that. Matthew, what's going on? Um, I'm not going to get the volumes down, um, because I'm... <laughs> having tried provoking an issue over the last month and a half, has it been? Uh, nothing, nothing has occurred except for uh, twice, and it was only when I didn't have my gear hooked up. It was, it was only when I had it idling in the background while other work was going on because it refused to be agitated to the point where it would give up its secrets. But uh, here we are. So I'm just going to make this public. And that's probably the best thing I can do. Um, well, not only for your um, for your peace of mind, but just to let people out there know some of the frustrations of this particular line of work. And, and I guess in the service industry as a whole, right, on the technical side, this happens with your car. You'll have an intermittent issue with your car. Or for Matthew, um, you'll have an issue that's uh, prevalent whenever you go to use it. It... It obstructs your ability to have fun and interact with the gear. Um, and for me, it's obstructing my ability to feel like I'm a good tech. This, this particular amp has been haunting me for um, the greater part of six months to a year. And uh, for a little background, I've seen this amp probably three times before. Um, I, I found a, a couple minor issues that were, um, these things were quantifiable um, through the use of not only my ears, but also, hey, have a look at the measurements. That tells me, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, that um, these parts need to be changed. So no, um, but no fictitious scapegoated components like a muffler bearing or something silly like that here. Um, this is an incredibly high quality build. It, it's completely hand wired, um, no expense spared to make a, a faithful recreation of the vintage AC30, a six input model, um, it, except it, it does have a bit of a VVR there. But his implementation is solid. There's nothing at fault here. Um, it, it's effectively out of the circuit with this with with this potentiometer full up full up um clockwise that is um so matthew's experiencing a, a random shot electrical interference type sound um i can't recreate that here um, i have a lot of ways of uh, of torture testing an amp to provoke issues, I have not been able to provoke this issue. And for me, this is not only a ding on my reputation, but it's kind of a ding on my ego. Because I, I take a lot of pride in resolving these edge cases, or, or not edge cases, on, on resolving uh, some of the more uh, technically dense issues 
that uh, that other text would walk away from. But instead, I'm I'm willing to lose hair follicles. I'm shedding all over this amp. Uh, the builder did an exquisite job with not only again his choice of components, uh, but his construction method and his soldering. Um, he didn't waste across the entire build, you know, wow. Like three grams of solder that didn't need to be wasted. So I'm perplexed. We're looking at the preamp side. I've already gone through uh, the power amp, which is why it's sitting uh, the way it's, it is oriented on, on my chassis stand. So I'm, I'm out of ideas. I'm waiting for the mold to pop up out of the hole so I can resolve this issue for you, but it's just not happening here. Um, I had this happen one other time uh, with a customer who was actually quite irate. Um, a guy who had a 77 uh, JMP uh, Marshall amp and uh, he was having some type of oscillation at his house and it wasn't happening here. He sent me videos, uh, video after video, just like you did, Matthew, um, of it happening at his house. Um, so the last thing I offered was just to go to his house, hat in hand, and just say, look, let me let me see if I can resolve it here. And maybe that's what I got to do with you, buddy. I don't know. But it's just working and sounding great. I love this amp. I'm not a big Vox guy, but this is one of the few Voxes that have made me turn around and say, wait a second, I've clearly missed something. This, this amp is beautiful. And I like everything about it. I like everything he did. Um, except the, the VVR bit. Uh, and that's only because I don't use them. But for guys I do, this is a great implementation. So that's my opinion, which is worth nothing. And that noise you hear in the background is because I don't have my phone in airplane mode. So you're getting some RF noise there injected into the input circuitry. Everything's great. The only thing, the only thing I've noticed here is a wire, a somewhat uh, noisy wire sitting on the volume control on the top boost, on the top boost circuit, um, but that's not even a thing. This is a, it's not even a noisy wire. It's it's only when I poke it that it's giving me a little bit of noise. It's not the cap on the other end, and it's it's not the poten potentiometer on the other end of that. So, the guy's wiring. Um, Choice of materials is impeccable. I'm not a big fan of solid core wire, um, aside from the way it lays out. Um, but I'm not getting any issues with that. And you're going to hear a lot of microphonics with with the tubes there, um, only because of the the EF86, which is uh, sympathetically resonating whenever I touch the chassis. But I've tried six different EF86s in there. I have new ones um, that are, as far as they go, pretty quiet. So, oh man, I'm at a loss. And, and this is one of those things that just makes me feel like a loser. I don't understand, um, aside from blaming it on the boogeyman, which is, hey, the wiring in your house... You know, I have no plausible or credible theory as to why you're experiencing what you're experiencing there. And I'm intentionally trying to run the length of this video with your amp on past the threshold where you experience the issues, just so you can see. I mean, aside from, this is everything on 10, you know? So aside from me running a, a a counter in the, one of the corners of the video. I'm not sure what else I can do to convince you that I've spent um, well over 20 hours on this thing in as many days. So 
Maybe this is one of those videos where, where the old guy waves the white flag. Um, or maybe I'm just venting frustration out there into the ether. Uh, both, uh, both scenarios are not healthy uh, nor good for business, I'm sure. But I, I need to bring a little bit of humanity uh, to the channel uh, because you, you guys typically say things that are always resolved. But I'm vexed and perplexed. Like Ripple it is perfect, especially considering the lower uh, filtration there using the, the eight microfarad caps. There's no leakage. So. Hmm. I'm just wanting it to act up, buddy. It's just not. I played it for uh, 45 minutes the other night. And because I, it was one of the rare nights when there was no family here. Um, at a much louder volume than would be considered permissible by the neighbors, um, but it doesn't matter at this point because they like music. That's that EF86 because everything's on 10 and it's going through a very sensitive 412 cab so I could hear everything. Um, I was monitoring current um, I, I have a, a six and a half digit uh, bench top uh, meter that can literally resolve down to six and a half digits. So if, if there's any sort of wiggle, I can catch it. I, nothing will escape if I'm monitoring it with this piece of gear. And certainly uh, nothing with loose variances and tolerances like this, which are on a schematic 10 to 20%. That's rock and roll. But I, since I also work on uh, test gear, and I also uh, work on vintage test gear, where uh, precision matters, um, I, I bring some of that into my amp work. Some of it, not enough to, to sterilize things. But if I need to see something, then I need to see it, and I'm just not seeing it. So I can, um, I could run some fun sounds, um, through the, the function generator, through all the inputs. It's not going to do anything. Um, I've ran all the jacks wide open as well, where they're, where the grids are acting like antennas. Um, I, I'm not able to get the sound. I, I heard it twice, I think, and it was just for a moment. And by the time I had the chassis back on, on the bench, it was too late because it had gone. And the circuit that this room is wired on, it, it shares a circuit with, um, wow, with a lot of switching power supplies, with some, some things that inject a lot of noise into the circuit. I'm talking like Wi-Fi things. I'm talking about certain appliances. It's on this circuit that feeds this room, and that's the phone, just, again, not in airplane mode. So I'm at, I'm at a loss, Matthew. Um, it, I'm hoping to give you an additional update, and I'm, you can tell I'm trying to run the clock down here just so we can capture something. I'm sitting at 12 minutes right now. And then before I was actually capturing things on, onto the, uh, the phone's hard drive, or SSD, um, this thing, this thing has been on um, just in this one session for 45 minutes prior. So you're looking at over an hour now. I've had the scope on all the grids. I've, I've scoped the output globally. Um, I've monitored the screen voltages. I've monitored plate voltages and current on each of the tubes, even the preamp tubes. Um, I, I think I said I sniffed out all the grids um, along the preamp. Um, everything. I've, I've gone in series to measure things, which is something that I normally don't have to do. But when I'm looking at um, really fine current measurements, I'm looking for anything that would give me some sort of a clue. 
It's just not happening here. So it, it just makes me want to say that it's your, it's the power in your house. God, I hate saying that. I kind of feel like that prior tech that blamed that blamed the, all the transformers in that one high watt and it ended up being uh, none of them so there it is we're at 14 minutes I'm going to wrap up this video but I will keep her on in the background and I'm going to go uh, shampoo some Rogaine in hope this finds you well buddy